I'm Joe Bear and I'm an associate at Adrian James Acoustics and this is a short presentation of an unusual little job we did for an existing university client of ours. As part of the establishment of a new engineering undergraduate degree programme, the university wanted to repurpose an existing laboratory as an engineering workshop to house lathes and milling machines. However, there were concerns that the associated noise and vibration generated by this equipment could disturb the sleeping, eating and mating behaviours of the residents of the adjoining building. The residents in this case being research colonies of beetles, bees, fish and frogs housed in a controlled environment facility. While they did not submit any written representations themselves, their human masters did voice concern on their behalf. The biology department were understandably concerned over any changes which might affect conditions in their controlled environment facility. Practically speaking, the environmental systems, heaters, pumps and filters were generating clearly perceptible levels of vibration and it seemed unlikely that the impact of new noise and vibration sources elsewhere in the building would be significant in comparison to these. But being academics, what the biologists really wanted to see were peer-reviewed long-term studies on the threshold of perception and behavioural impacts of noise and vibration on each species over multiple life cycles, which is clearly not practical in this case. Having had their previous plans for a dedicated engineering building shelved, the engineering department were keen to get on with relocating their existing equipment and buying new machines to go into the new lab in time for the start of the academic year. There were no noise and vibration issues with the existing engineering facilities housed elsewhere in a similar concrete framed heavyweight building. And with the proposed anti-vibration mounts, they saw no reason to think there would be problems in the new lab. Our client, the University Estates Department, was stuck in the middle and just wanted a report to make the problem go away and fast. We explained that the work involved to properly calculate vibration transfer through the building and develop appropriate criteria to assess the impact of the predicted levels on non-human receptors was way, way outside their time and budget constraints. So then they asked, well, what can you do? When measuring sound insulation in buildings, we measure a simplified transfer function between different spaces and use this to protect noise transfer between them. Why can't we do the same for vibration sources? Luckily, this is a pre-recorded video, so I can't hear the barrage of comments pointing out the long list of limitations and problems with this methodology. However, we had a long conversation with the client about the uncertainty involved with this type of oversimplified modelling, and they accepted this and gave us the approval to go ahead. We started by measuring vibration levels generated by the existing metalwork machines in the floor slab of the engineering workshop building. From this, we determined that the majority of the energy in the slab was contained within the vertical axis and within the range of excitation that we could generate with a standardised source, in this case, a humble tapper machine. We measured single axis third octave levels at the location of the proposed equipment and at a number of spot positions in the various receiver rooms. We also measured background vibration levels in the receiver rooms, which were dominated by the climate control systems used to create just the right conditions for the residents. We estimated a vibration transfer function between the source and various locations, including a correction for background vibration levels using a methodology based loosely on ISO 140 part four. We used the calculated vibration transfer functions along with the levels measured in the existing engineering workshop to predict the resultant levels of vibration in the adjoining facilities. From this, we were able to determine that any transmitted vibration was likely to be well above the cutoff frequency of the standard vibration isolation systems available for the proposed equipment. And once these are taken into an account, well below the levels of vibration generated by the existing equipment in the controlled environment facility. With our report, the university was able to proceed with their plans to relocate the engineering workshop without fear of instigating a long running interdepartmental or interspecies feud. The plan was to go back to site last academic year to conduct post-installation commissioning measurements, but with university buildings shut to all but non-essential human visitors, we have not yet been able to visit to inquire how the various beasts are getting along with their new machine neighbours. No animals were harmed in the making of this presentation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.